I am not cool enough to make a video called The Jerk's Guide to the Unknown. That makes it sound like I'm covering the outer rim of space or the depth of the human soul. Covering a video game character I played while wearing pajamas just makes it really sad. The Unknown is, without a doubt, my favorite killer we've gotten in the past two years. That isn't to say I have terminally hated every single one, but I normally don't play the PTB past the second day or more in its closure. I played all things wicked basically every day until they shut the curtain and closed up shop. Yet I know myself well enough to know that I'm not gonna main him. He's in the rotation, but that rotation is shared with maybe 15 other killers. Frankly, I know you guys well enough too. Behind every Sable Ward player is just the same old Meg player going through a phase. The theme of all things Wicked is a bit weird. The marketing comes off as an ode to creepypastas in the line of Marble Hornets, with a lot of brief shots where you're meant to point and go, Oh, that's him! Then you jump in and the character has an M203 grenade launcher attachment in his neck. Then it's got an alt girl on the survivor side, alongside a map that has a colorful arcade in it, and then I discovered that the real theme of this chapter is to be the most elaborate insult to the desecrated corpse of VHS. I like the unknown because he's a fashionable mix of everything I enjoy in a killer, while also having a strong amount of map pressure and a status effect that forces both players to act in different ways. Story-wise, the killer is something we literally know four things about. One, he comes after you if you think about him. Two, he has the power to take the voice of his victims. Number three, if you're killed by him, all traces of you disappear. And number four, he's just a little guy. Then they mixed in a fifth thing. Chemical, Chemical X. X. The unknown fires out something called Unknown Venom X, a projectile that explodes when it hits the ground. If it hits a survivor in midair, they are simply slowed down. Your goal is to specifically nail them with this explosion, inflicting survivors with a weakened status effect, and if they're hit again with the splash, they'll take damage. Then there's the second part of your power, the hallucinations. While you walk around, a meter slowly fills up on both sides of your screen, and when it's full, it creates a copy of yourself that you can teleport to later, which makes me wonder why the hag still even bothers to show up to work anymore. The power is split between those two elements, but they help one another. If you uvix someone, it reduces the cooldown on your next teleport, and your teleport gives you unique ways to take risky firing angles without getting punished. At close range, you'll have to utilize its bouncing capability, attempting to lightly ricochet the shot off walls, but calm down that excitement because it's got the bouncing power of grandma's cooked spaghetti. I found the bouncing was the most reliable around corners that you can't turn around or window tiles. At medium to long range, you want to try and fire it off like a mortar, trying to predict where the survivor will go. The survivors do have a wide range of motions and movements that can make it a bit more tricky. Aiming with the power isn't that difficult outside of that, but you need to think differently from Huntster. While the hindered effect from a direct shot can help you line up your bullet, you're primarily aiming for the explosion. It'd probably be better to aim on PC, but the cross progression is on its way, I'm sure. This post was made in 2021, and someone is holding it up. I would very much like to take the past eight years I've spent on my PlayStation and finally commit to a mouse and keyboard. You might say I'm acting entitled to my cross progression. And that's because I am. Survivors can remove the weakened status effect by staring at the unknown. They need to swivel the entire camera around and make enough eye contact to free themselves, creating duels where you want to hide your ass from them and they want to lock you down. This is a very important part of playing the unknown that I learned during my psychotic PTB driven haze. Try to move around walls and generally surprise them. The window for survivors to break you out is quite fast. If you raw dog their sight, you'll get just enough time to fire one shot. So unless you're very confident in landing that one shot, try to keep that window open by slipping around. I also recommend landing the weakened on some people and leaving them be, especially if they have a strong tile nearby. When inflicted with the status effect, they'll be forced to seek you out, putting themselves in awkward positions where they might end up giving you a totally free hit while also not doing generators. They do this because if they keep the status effect in the wild, they make themselves vulnerable to a cross-map shot. After a few games and you understand the controls, you can fire at generators from really far away by aiming upwards. Unless a curse has been put upon you. You can use this to spread out the status effect while also making many more opportunities to place the hallucinations. As time goes on, survivors might be less likely to remain on generators while in your terror radius. All of this mixes together to be a killer 
I am perfectly happy with. No, you did not sign up for an optimistic guide, but I didn't sign up for you to tell me what I can and can't be. You can delay a hallucination from being created by pulling out your slimy guy, though you only need to tap the button a little to stop it from happening, meaning you can spam the power button to delay the hallucination without suffering the slowdown effects. I'm going to use my influence to ensure we all call this edging. While edging, you can cross entire distances in order to get it exactly where you want. Just be aware that survivors have tools to easily detect the hallucinations, so don't get overwhelmingly attached. They can destroy these, but more on that later. If you fire a shot during the wrong part of the cooldown, you will no longer be able to edge and stop a hallucination from happening. When you hit the teleport button, it's extremely smooth. There's a tiny slowdown, but you can use this for not only map control, but easy chase enders too. Teleporting leaves behind a tiny clone of you, so survivors won't instantly know you've activated it. You could have a maximum of four hallucinations. They'll start to overwrite each other if you leave them out and about. My favorite thing to do is to set the hallucinations in special spots that can allow me to take dumb positions without being punished for it. For example, on Eerie of Crows, if you go to the top building and place a hallucination right there, you become captain of ye own ship! Man the starboard cannons! Fire! Fire! Then I can teleport up and down from this position while effectively losing nothing. There are other maps you could do this on, like the top floor on the Disturbed Ward, or the large roof on Garden of Joy. Now if you have to play harder, there are the Unknown's perks. The new sampling platter we've got to apply to all the existing killers. Ooh, wow, that one's a little burnt. The first perk is called Unbound. When you damage a survivor, for 30 seconds you have an opportunity to use this perk by vaulting a window. When you do, you gain a 5% haste for 10 seconds. The idea here is that unlike the several other perks that give you a 5% haste, this one you can pull the trigger on whenever you want. I think it'll be good on Chucky because of his scamper, and possibly Wesker. Unfortunately, Chucky also dropped the best 5% haste perk in the entire game, and you just don't know it yet. Then we have Undone. Yes, there is a theme here because I'm calling this unfucking believable. Sometimes I think I jump the gun on perks and say it's bad before I get the chance to experiment. I now use Chucky's blinding perk unironically now. Undone is not that. This perk gives you a small amount of tokens when survivors fail skill checks. The next time you damage a generator, every token is converted to one point of damage and a second the generator is blocked. And the issue is right here. I have not gotten more than six tokens and I was on the PTB. They could have paired me against the real Dwight Fairfield and I still would have been starving for stacks. It's going to have to be used in combination with other perks like Overcharge to be of any value. It could be worse. There could be no combination to run, and the perk would just be useless in its entirety. Though I'd like a higher standard, please and thank you. Then, lastly, you have Unforeseen. When you damage a generator, you give it your terror radius for 30 seconds. Which is fair, because Dark Devotion was probably too complex for people. People have said this is a worse Trail of Torment, and I would somewhat disagree. Trail of Torment can last longer, but it can also be used to lure survivors to a certain spot. While this theoretically wards them away. Each has its own use. That's right, all this time on this this temple has been great for me. This will be the perk I do the most experimenting with. I saw an interview that says they have a soft rule where they develop one perk for newbies, one perk for veterans, and one perk for the silly people. And my goal has always been to get you guys hyped for perk number three. Playing against the unknown is a practice in how much value you can take away from his power. If you approach any hallucination, you can dispel it, locking your camera in so that you can't actively check your surroundings. This takes a bit longer if you have weakened on you. Dispelling these is going to be extremely important because if you let them sit around, you are going to give him insane map mobility. Granted, survivors won't use the tools against the killer even if it shoots fire, so what do I know? When trying to run from the UVX, make sure that you run back as well as left to right. Double points if you can line around a tree, because that will block the shot for sure. Lockers can protect you from UVX as well. That combined with their aura reading protection leads me to believe these things are lined with lead. And keeping with my promise to include new survivors in these videos. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway. Sable Ward is the first survivor since Yoon Jin that feels like she has an identity in her perks. Sable thrives in the basement, where she can perform tons of occult actions, most of which work against you, because reading her backstory made me thoroughly believe that Sable Ward is meant to be the first survivor that feels good to kill. Oh yeah, sure, Jonah was politically incorrect, but
but anyone who says this about themselves deserves it more. Sable's first perk is Strength in Shadows, which allows you to heal in the basement without a medkit at 70% speed. This is probably her most rational perk. The other two after this are swinging drastically. My only advice is that you better not fuck up any skill checks down there, because I can't think of a worse place to be injured. Then there's Wicked, which actually was changed from the PTB. It used to give you a bonus against the Mangled status effect, but now it allows you to always unhook yourself in the basement, as well as revealing the killer's aura for 20 seconds when you're unhooked. People are scared of this perk, and well, I can't say they're not wrong to be. Finally, we have the brand new perk type. Invocation. The way this perk works is that there's a circle in the basement, and if you can channel an interaction for a set amount of time, you trigger an effect. You could speed up the process by having people come down and channel it with you. There looks like there's room for four circles, so there are probably four types of perks. Weaving Spiders makes it so that if you can channel the entire 120 second wait time, every generator will have the time to repair reduced. Effectively, it is a brand new part on every generator. And you pay the price by being broken after it's completed. It's an extremely controversial perk because it might do nothing, or a little bit of something. Helped knowing that people will hate you for the rest of the match if they see this on their HUD. And that's the thing I truly resent about it. If they were to introduce a new perk type, I would very much have liked it if they had gone with an easier sell. A safer perk that could still get some value without a chance of throwing entirely. Getting caught in the basement is bad enough, but if you are interrupted for even a second, the progress meter will drop faster than you can say, maybe I should have tried a toolbox. And when you consider that this is like two minutes of doing nothing, not taking anyone off hooks, not doing gens, not healing, not taking a chase, that is such a hard offer that your team should be allowed to kick you in the nuts. But getting this to work will be beneficial. It has to be. But a lot of that depends on when and where. Being broken all game sucks, so do you want to use it at the start of the match where it will save everyone time, or late into the game when you've gotten some healthy chases in? Heck, I believe Sable Ward is one massive trick, where her backstory is intentionally annoying so that me and everyone says it's annoying. Then they hit us with her tome that makes her extremely sympathetic. Well, joke's on you, behavior, because I'm putting this prediction in my fusion to protect myself from exactly that. Hear that, preps? I put my middle finger up at you. This is the part where I try to influence you to play like a freak against your own chances of winning for the sake of a better world. No, I will not say hysteria this time, even though I have been totally correct every time I have. Insidious is a perk that has not been useful for almost six years. How it works is that if you stand still, you lose your terror radius. That's it. I don't know if you've noticed, but you are leaving several copies of yourself around the map. Nah, 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 nah. All right, fine, fine, I'll go somewhere else. Oh, okay. And when you oh, use Insidious, God. it looks Where like this. Holy shit. Don't you dare. Don't you dare because ah! I'm a real motherfucker! Oh my God! There are a few weaknesses. First off, survivors can see the aura of your hallucinations, allowing them to suss you out. Secondly, if they are affected by the UVX, they will be able to tell it's you because their meter begins reducing. The upside is that you will become the scariest fucking thing they will have encountered that week. Not to mention the paranoia that will set in as they approach every hallucination, wondering if it's gonna jump out at them. Plus, the risk can be mitigated as you can slam the teleport button and move across the map anyway. Next is I'm All Ears, and I'm fairly certain this will never leave my build. This allows you to see survivors' auras when they vault something. And yes, that helps you line up the shot, but it does something more than that. See, not only does the projectile explode, it goes through walls. Meaning, if you predict where the survivor is along the wall, you can shoot the floor and hit them with a fucking wall bang. It lets you hit them with 100% bullshit, and if they somehow find out what you're doing, they'll have to start pathing the loops in a way that is way less efficient. Another perk I'd like to recommend is Batteries Included, because I enjoy dramatic irony. Batteries Included makes you 5% faster when near completed gens, and a few seconds afterwards. With the unknown's teleporting power, you can often find yourself warping in and out of this perk's area of effect. Not to mention, you'll be able to take the speed boost with you if you teleport from a nearby completed generator. If you want a hex, we've got Blood Favor. This causes pallets to become blocked when you damage a survivor, as long as the hex stays up. This can let you set up long mortar shots instead of tight angles. If you're a paranoid psychopath, here you go. Darkness Revealed is great for allowing cross maps or solid teleports. Darkness Revealed triggers when you open a locker. Then, it reveals the aura of everyone near every locker on the map. Ultimate Weapon has been a real oppressor, keeping this perfectly fine perk down, but it's worth noting Darkness Revealed does have its strengths. Aura Reading does not give a notification that you've been hit with it, unlike the scream provided by Ultimate Weapon. It also has a much larger range, affecting every locker once it's used. 
which can quickly highlight a generator, following up with a long-range bolt that gives them the ick. There are so many Darkness Revealed clips that I have that showing them to you would drain both of our time. You can also use Gearhead, but I don't feel like reading out its power description. Forced Hesitation can be very fucking devious. This perk slows survivors down by 20 whole percent when you down somebody nearby. I'm going to say something I probably should not. You can get a lot of success if you are in the light range of a hooked survivor, then spitting on them when they get unhooked. That's two weakened people, even if you aren't trying to tunnel them. Then I discover Deathbound, and I, I realize that this killer actually just has a very interesting relationship with basically every perk. Dead by Daylight has a wide berth of perks, and tons of ways they can mix together. There are perks that change how you play a killer entirely, perks that mix with other perks, perks that change how the survivor plays entirely, perks that allow for interaction interesting scenarios based on the map and add-ons, yet here we sit, surrounded by the same 10 every game, and it's been that way for the past 8 years. You kill one of these perks and like a fucking Hydra, another must-have takes its place. This meta has never been in a good spot. Everyone is always running something close to the best perks. So, until Behavior finds a way to burn this meta to the ground before a new one can grow, it would help if we had some mutual agreement where we used those perks anyway. It would make the game a happier place if we all tried to aim for creative builds anyway, even if it means losing a precious match or two. You might be saying I'm acting entitled to you playing the game like me. And that's because I am entitled for you to play the game like me. I decide what you can and can't be. For add-ons, you have a decent variety, all with dynamic ways of changing the power, and all I want to talk about is the red ones. No, the milk carton is for the one and a half hour guide video. Captured by the Dark starts off with all of the survivors in Weakened. However, it reduces the maximum amount of hallucinations to three. I think it's a cute little story beat. The add-on is a documentary about the unknown, implying that all the survivors hear about the unknown before the trial, and that's why they're weakened. They tripped up on rule number one. The iridescent OSS report- hold on, it's a fucking piece of paper, you can't make a fucking glass piece of paper. The iridescent OSS report makes your teleport leave behind a stronger decoy. It now has a red stain and terror radius. You can even play with the stain in a way I haven't tried yet possibly leaving the glow in a doorway to scare the shit out of people. In closing, the unknown is a very cool and fun killer. The last killer I was this into was Singularity, but this is a step even further. I'm waiting to play Singularity more, when I am finally given what I am owed. There aren't a lot of killers that feel better on PC, but it just so happens to be the ones I want to play. Anyway, where do we go from here? English class taught me so much about writing a thesis. You know what? We're being simple. There is nothing bigger than that at play here. The unknown is cool. I floated through the vacuum of space and came back with nothing, except a 30-page manga for some reason. Play the killer and enjoy it while you can, before you have absorbed the fun and it's just another character in the roster. And we wait for the next one. Here, sit, in this exact frame, until the new killer drops. We are going to the unknown. Take one of these. Hey, thanks for watching. Before we move on to the regular spiel, I would like to say that I've got a very special tweet going out on Friday. I won't spoil it too much, but I already have. Now, let's thank the people on Patreon who made videos like this possible. I would especially like to thank Sturmfetter, Sparkbolt120, Wreckren, MyRead, MarioFan997, Pyrozine, Jonas Simpson, Angel Martinez, Anthony R. Chambers, CLX7R, Ethan A. Gremlin broke my video game. Cold and I won. And Colorado Ranger. Also, I've been reading those community posts. I know. I get it. And for all that, I have to say, rock and stone. <laughs>